Hello, my name is Dr. Andrew Tidball, and I work in the neurology department at the University of Michigan in the lab of Jack Parent and our collaborator, Dr. Lori Isom. Today I will be presenting work recently published in the journal Brain entitled Variant Specific Changes in Persistent or Resurgent Sodium Currents in SCN 8 a Related Epilepsy Patient-Derived Neurons. In the past two decades, many severe early onset epilepsies have been shown to be caused by genetic mutations. Early on, these were found in channels in family studies, but more recently, with the advent of next-generation sequencing, many mutations have been found in many, many genes of various functions, and these include SCN8A. SCN8A-related epilepsy, also known as EIEE13, is characterized by several key symptoms. These include severe intractable seizures, developmental delays, and many patients being nonverbal or non-ambulatory, with the severity of the disease depending on the position of the mutation. Also, these patients are at high risk of SUDEP, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. This group of patient pictures depicts patients with SCN8A, and those in color are patients who have passed away due to SUDEP. SCN8A encodes the voltage-gated sodium channel NAV1.6. This channel is impermeable to sodium until it is activated by depolarization of the membrane, allowing sodium to flow into the cell. Quickly after activation, the channel becomes inactivated, allowing the membrane to repolarize. This can be shown here as a current diagram. SCN8A related epilepsy is often compared to Dravet syndrome, since Dravet syndrome is also caused primarily by mutations in another voltage gated sodium channel gene, SCN1A. Dravet syndrome is caused when frame shift or nonsense mutations, as well as a few missense mutations, lead to a loss of function of one of the SCN1A alleles. However, SCN8A, leading to EIE13, is almost entirely due to missense mutations, and these mutations are known to cause a toxic gain of function, altering the function of one of the alleles. Because missense mutations leading to SCN8A-related epilepsy can happen all throughout the gene, this means that depending on the nature of the mutation, there can be many, many different changes to the function of the channel from patient to patient. Therefore, we wanted to know how similar are SCN8A patient neurons between each other. To do this, we compared neurons from three SCN8A patients. The variants are shown here on this diagram of the, of the gene. These patients also had a wide range of seizure onset, seizure type, and severity. To study the patient neurons, we generated induced pluripotent stem cells. These were made by taking a skin biopsy from each patient, culturing these biopsies to generate fibroblast cultures. These fibroblasts were programmed into stem cells, which were differentiated into neurons. These cells can be used to compare electrical activity. What we found in our study was that compared to control iPSC-derived neurons, Patients 1 and 2 had an increase in persistent sodium current. However, patient 3 did not have an increase in persistent sodium current, but it did have an increase in resurgent sodium current, which was not true of patients 1 and 2, showing that we have two characteristic phenotypes in this patient population that differ from one another. Surprisingly, when we compared axon initial segment lengths, all three patients had shortened axon initial segments compared to controls. We also compared the activity of networks of neurons from each of these patients and controls using multi-electrode array recordings. From this data, we showed that patients have increased bursting activity compared to controls, 
and we utilized this phenotype to begin testing different pharmacological agents. The two presented in this study are phenytoin, a commonly used therapy in SCN 8A related epilepsy, and Rilizol, a novel therapy. For both of these compounds, we found a reduction in bursting that specifically affected the patient cells at lower concentrations and both cells at higher concentrations. Rilizol is an FDA-approved drug, and in cell culture, it has been shown to inhibit persistent and resurgent sodium currents. However, it has never been tested in epilepsy patients before. Based on these results, three separate clinicians decided to use Rilizol in their patients for compassionate use. Patient 1 had a 50% reduction in seizure frequency. Patient 3 had an immediate dramatic reduction with months of seizure freedom. And an additional patient also had a dramatic seizure reduction for several months. This information shows that further research should be used to test whether Rilizol can be an effective therapeutic. More results on Rilizol and others can be found in our study. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.